be sharper. They've got to be in better health, but then you've got to get out and quickly rotate to find shooters. They're going to have to work today. There's going to be a lot of shots put up from Oklahoma State. Amani Lester is going to get the tip duties, and Oklahoma State was ready to give it to K-State, but Lester could not keep the ball with the Wildcats, so it's Oklahoma State who begins for the first possession of the game against the Wildcats. In white, Oklahoma State in black and orange and a three-pointer right from the get-go from Staley Hurd, one of the talented freshmen in this league. They did signal that they'll look at it later to see if her foot was on the line. A hard take by Sundell. K-State will answer with a three. Briley Glenn not able to hit, and Hurd gets the rebound. And Hurt early has been a catalyst, and as you said it, Brian, she's put in a lot of minutes, and she is going to be aggressive. That's where the backline defense has to come in for Kansas State. Well, Lester, who played well in Austin, comes out swinging literally right away on defense. The action K-State needs is they've got to get a lot of movement in the half court. You want to make Oklahoma State have to work for it. Noble's first attempt, not there. You can see Cowgirls wanting to take advantage of Gusters inside at 6-5 with no Lee. You figure that's an advantage for Oklahoma State, but Lester playing on the top side was denying. And Gusters hasn't started a lot of games, but she has played in 10 of 11 Big 12 games so far. She's battled her own injury issues when she became available for OSU. But she's got to be that anchor inside. She's got great hands. They got to get her touches, but she's also got to be a force defensively. Got to be more of a score. Gusters fighting inside, able to get that layup up and in. One thing J.C. Hoyt says about Hannah Gusters, she's got great foot. They've got to take advantage of that matchup. Now, Bradley Glenn being dared to shoot right now. She's missed all three three-pointers that she's taken here in the early going. Diana Walker headed to the scores table. A little bit of rapid fire right now for this Kansas State offense. I don't think necessarily the early looks in the shot clock that Jeff Mitty wants. He wants better options, better movement within their offense. Sundell just rolling up the court. She'll score again. Sundell has all four for Kansas State. Everett slipped in the lane, lost the ball. Walker able to whip it ahead for Sanchez, but she misses the layup. And ever in pain underneath. Yeah, she went down hard, and you saw sort of that knee buckle as she went in to the middle of the lane. There was a lot of congestion. Seems as though she may have just lost her footing when she went. Kansas State able to go the other way. So this is just a very depleted roster right now for J.C. Hoyt. power with a brace that was given to her by Kansas State. And she is headed to the locker room. Off the bench comes Praise Egareva, who has played well off the bench. And now that Oklahoma State roster even thinner. We'll get to that in a moment. Sundell will let go of three. And Sundell has done all the heavy lifting playing their style of basketball. Felt like got away from that a little bit in the two road games against Oklahoma and Texas. Two narrow defeats to two of the better teams in the league at the moment. Travel on the far side here by Monagret Aussie. Two know each other from international play. There's Sundell, who has scored all seven for the Wildcats in a little scoring affair early. He State's had plenty of chances behind the arc. They have not hit their threes so far in this game. Nice give and go run to Hoffman, and she lays it in. And that's movement. So the Wildcats have answered that early start by Oklahoma State. They've scored nine straight, but it's come over nearly four minutes. It hasn't looked necessarily pretty. Gusters able to get inside of Moffitt, and finally, they trying to be decisive here and not take a three. Sundell into Gusters, couldn't hit it. Moffitt's tip try, no. Aussie trying to look to the baseline. Oklahoma State looking for an avenue to get to Gusters. Shot clock at five. Noble gets it back. Gusters with it. And a reset for the Cowgirls. Hurd 
Her first basket. All off the offensive rebound. That's what generates that second chance opportunity. It wasn't a quick putback, but yet forces Kansas State to have to guard them through that reset. Low scoring opening quarter here in the Little Apple. Gregory in the lane. Gets the front of the roll. Well, that's one of the beauties of being back at home is that you know you're going to get some of those rolls. Gusters. Travel. K-State cannot hold for the final shot. If they went quick, they could have gotten two for one. They will have the ball to begin the second quarter. Sandell may have gotten away with an offensive foul. Gregory, no. Walk in the offensive putback. A rare offensive rebound for K-State. There's a reason why the freshman's getting about 22 minutes a game in conference play, and it's little things like that. Doesn't have to be a huge score, but you pick and choose your moments. That time, a great offensive rebound and aggressiveness out front. Now Walker with a near steal in the backcourt. Knocks the ball away from Ossie. She's gotten so many minutes that trust to have her out front, and she's been a very good defender. Wildcats challenging her this week after two tough games against Oklahoma and Texas. Heard left open. Hits another top of the circle three. Big time shot right there for the freshman, getting her feet set and open. In case they get a final shot, Lester fouled as she goes up. But it is going to put Lester at the line for two. And she'll make the first. Lester has had a good week of practice. Jeff Mitty said after the Texas game, Liked her play. We'll hear more about her from Hannah Whetstone coming up a little bit later in the game. Lester got the start, and she's got a block, a couple of free throws. It gives K-State a three-point lead at the end of one. One quarter of the books. Kansas State, the eight-ranked team of the country, playing one more game without their superstar. Lead by three over the Cowgirls on Big 12 now. Appreciate it. Gabby Gregory on point for Kinley. Able to drop one in to start this second quarter as K-State lengthens their lead. And Gregory with four points. A low-scoring affair in the first quarter. And then the big story here early, Emily Ebert and her return to Manhattan, Kansas. And it's been a, an addition to this team for Oklahoma State. Injured on her first play, had to be helped off the court. So injuries continue to mount for Oklahoma State. Now maybe down to only eight available players today. This is a game that has much more been played in the paint and inside that three-point line. Both of these teams up until that make were 3 of 14, now 3 of 15, 4 of 15 combined so far in this game. Yep. Garzon and Aussie are the two that you do not want to leave open behind the arc. Open around 50%. Lester working on Gusters. Spins on her, gets the shot blocked. It's batted back towards K-State. Another reset for the Wildcats. Sides, Lester Walker, three freshmen out on the court and a foul on sides as she goes up for the shot. Her minutes have been limited as over the course of Big 12 play, she gets herself to the free throw line here early. Yeah, that was something that Jeff Benny had mentioned the other day that he had visited with Sides about was that Sides had become a little bit too sped up in trying to make an impact in her time recently this last week. Got to be ready to go. Walker with another poke away. This one will go to Gregory. She knows what to do on the other end. 6-4, Gabby. Heard taking Glenn baseline and draws another foul. They are at their best when they can generate offense with their defense. Tips, steals, runouts, some live ball turnovers, which Oklahoma State has been able to control. And for the Cowgirls, this is definitely their opportunity. They've gotten to the line. They haven't shot the ball well from the field so far. Just one of six here in the second half, in the second quarter. But they've gotten to the line, and they're making Kansas State pay. Update from the Wildcat huddle. Here's Hannah. Hey, thanks, Brian. Coach Mitty making sure his team heard him in this last timeout. He was asking for more hustle out of his team and more ball movement on offense, which we just saw. Well, Riley Glenn able to hit the mid-range jumper. Noble with a great drive and penetration. Her first, you've hit every hurdle in the 110 hurdle run, right? How do you stay positive as a player when you turn it over and have a little adversity in a game like this? Well, I think the biggest factor is, is you've got to stick together as a unit, that you can't all of a sudden 
have sort of that infighting or that feel as though you've lost the connectivity of yourself as teammates. Coaches are going to have coach speak. You're going to hear that in the locker room and from the sideline and in practice and shoot arounds. But as a unit, team wise, that's who has to stick together. And I think if that's the piece of the puzzle and that positivity, good things can come of that. As we said, this team has been in games. They've just got to figure out a way to do that. Yeah. Perhaps a little bit of mental fatigue for Oklahoma State. Well, that's where they just do that, and they extend this lead now, 27-19. Relatively poor offensive start for both teams. K-State now up to 39% shooting, but they have done away with shooting the three. One of nine from behind the arc. It's holstered that or one of 11, I should say. Noble will try her hand at one, and that will fall. And Noble may be getting on track. Five points for Noble. And that's the one we said. Put the ball in her hands, allow her to create. She not only does it for herself, but for her teammates. Riley Glenn working on Gusters. Left hand, that's her hit or her prime. A hand that she prefers. Garzon in transition. And that's where she is so good. What's crazy about the Argus zone is she's just about 27% from three in conference play. But yet when she gets her feet set and she's ready, she's the kind of player that could open up for this Oklahoma State offense. And the Wildcats able to get down the court quicker than Oklahoma State. Riley Glenn with an easy lay-in. Heard drop off to Gusters. Gusters looks a bit fatigued. It's up at the table for her. Aussie. And a pass deflected out high by Glenn. Still with it. Riley Glenn shot blocked by Oklahoma State. And forces Kansas State now to be able to repeat that possession. Heard missed basketball in Oklahoma last year. A great recruiting coup yeah, for JC Hoy. Absolutely. Big get, big get. Inbound play. Glenn wide open, right underneath the basket. And already 10 points for Bradley Glenn. Six seconds to go. Can Ossie get off a shot? Near midcourt. Stutter steps, lets it go. And it will not can't make it. You make the next pass, and you might go from a good shot to a great shot. That's where K-State's offense has to be in this second half. A little bit of sign language there from... Jeff Biddy to his team will be on the defensive end to open up the third quarter. Oklahoma State in black, K-State in white as we go to the second half. Both teams starting five back out there. Lob for Gusters too tall and an unfortunate turnover for Oklahoma State to begin. And that's where it starts is that you got to take better care of the basketball. And they knew right out of the gate they wanted to see if they couldn't isolate Gusters where she had success early in the first half. Couldn't get her the basketball. you got to give her a chance to be able to catch and finish. Lester into Gusters in the lane. Couldn't finish. Yeah, a bit of a no call kind of both way. It looked like there may have been a bump, but she could have traveled. But neither way, can't get it to go. And this is where Oklahoma State has to be able to capitalize when they can get stops on the other end. Heard left open. Hammers in a three. It's the inside out. We saw it a little bit in that first half. Jeff Mitty mentioned the skip pass. That wasn't necessarily a skip. That was slow rotation defensively out on shooters. Jalen Glenn could have gone back to Lester. Kansas State with all their players on one side of the court. Now they start to spread out. Gregory hunting for a way through the defense and Gusters reaches down and whacks the arm of Gabby Gregory on the shot. But they're going to give the foul to Hurd and another bullet dodged for Gusters as that would have been her third. A year ago, this is where she made a living, was forcing teams to have to guard her one-on-one -on -one and get herself there. Right now, she's shooting almost 76% from the line in conference play. Put it on the floor, be aggressive, get those isos and those one-on-ones, and get yourself back to the strike. Gregory has eight. It has been a year of frustration for Gregory, who has fought through a number of different injuries, but now finally getting healthy. This shot still hasn't fallen, and you can tell she just continues to get more frustrated by all the work and the hours put in, and you don't and it's your final year, and you're trying to get it to all go, and finally you're on a team that's got a chance to do something great. And well, high expectations, and obviously all of these players have that for themselves. You wouldn't be competing at the Division One level if you didn't have that. For Gabby Gregory, she was a first-team All-Conference player a year ago. Right now, that's not where this season is lining up for her, but ultimately trying to figure out a way to continue to contribute to her team. How about that from Staley Hurd? 
on a what was a broken play. Briley Glenn was letting the ball bounce out of bounds. Oklahoma State gets it to Hurd, and she makes something happen with this improbable and one. Fantastic possession right there by the Cowgirls. As you said, just keep the possession alive. you got to do a little bit of everything right now, and this team just trying to gut it out. And they have got a freshman who is leading the way, and Staley Hurd have been so impressed from what I have seen so far here this afternoon on the road. Brian Glenn, top of the circle shot, not there. And it goes back to that daring. They're going to allow Kansas State to take some of those perimeter shots. They're going to make you have to beat you from the outside. Turnover forced by K-State. They couldn't corral it. Oklahoma State with an 8-2 to two start to begin the third quarter is in with the two points. Noble lines up a three and not a bad. Oklahoma State is in front. And a huge play and a great skip pass to find an open shooter. And right now, this Oklahoma State team, they have come out with a bit of fire here to start the second half. If any looked like he was very close to burning a timeout. Riley Glenn left wide open, hits a three-pointer. That's our first one of the day, and as you said it, they're daring her to be able to beat them. They're going to give it to others. They're not going to allow others. They're going to force Bradley Glenn to be a one-woman wrecking crew here at Bramless today. Trying to get the ball to Gusters. Garzon on the opposite side. Answer three-pointer. The skip pass has been there all afternoon, but the thing I like about it for Oklahoma State, Brian, is these shooters are ready to catch and shoot. They are in rhythm each and every time. Crowd daring Glenn to shoot it. She'll draw in, go right around Gusters and score. The right decision. 15 now for Glenn, a season high. Penetration and kick. Noble couldn't hit this one. And the rebound long out of bounds to K-State. As this game wears on, but right now, adrenaline carrying them to a 14-7 start to take a lead at one point. Well, Quincy Noble, she played 40 minutes against Oklahoma a week ago. And then you've got Anna Ossie. She played 40 minutes against Oklahoma as well. So they log the numbers. Can Kansas State, they have to be able to capitalize on some of that fatigue and the fact that these players will wear down quick. Gregory give it a little more room. Finally hits a three-pointer. Her just going one on one-on-one. Drives and scores. Sanchez wanted to pass to Glenn, and Gusters read it. Her just one on five, passes to Noble, buries the three. Let's create. You just got to be able to draw that defense and create and find shooters. And this is confident scores right now for Oklahoma State. Bradley Glenn has taken 18 shots in today's game. Seven of 18. One of seven behind the arc. Lob to Gusters. Somehow catches and scores. Well, and the help side is there, but Kansas State's got to be more aggressive. Walker takes a jump shot. That won't go. K-State settling for jump shots on the offensive end, and the Cowgirls now with the largest lead of three looking to build on it. Corner three by Ossie, and she hit it! Big time play that time, and it comes and it starts with Garzone. She goes baseline, relocates shooters, and Jack Mitty right now not at all happy with the defensive effort by his team, and he wants to talk about it. Oklahoma State bearing shots from behind the arc. Five of six in the third quarter. Almost 250 since they have scored their last basket. And the droughts have been part of the problem. When you look at the last two games against Oklahoma and against Texas, when you scored just nine points in the second quarter at UT, that was really what set some of those the factor apart. You've got to be able to weather the storm better. Riley Glenn, she has been the one daring to shoot all day long by Oklahoma State, and she hits a wide open three there, 18 now for Glenn. And that stops the drought and a bit of a run, but yet the momentum still continues to be with this Oklahoma State squad because they have really forced the action within this Welcome back to Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Oklahoma State's head coach, J.C. Hoyt, 
basketball roots run deep. She reached the 2,000 point club at Hoxie High School here in Kansas, played collegiately at Wichita State, and went on to serve as an assistant coach for Fort Hayes State, Nevada, and Kansas State with Jeff Mitty. She then took the helm at the University of Missouri, Kansas City in 2017, and is now in her second season at Oklahoma State. But it should also be noted that JC is the daughter of Kansas High School basketball coaching legend, Shelly Hoyt. Her mom, Shelly, has led teams to multiple state titles and has found success everywhere she has gone. There's no question that Coach J.C. Hoyt gets that coaching spirit and love for the game from her mom. Ty Walker hits an open jumper. You saw a quick shot there of Shelly Hoyt sitting behind Oklahoma State's bench. One of the true legendary coaching names in all of Kansas. Oklahoma State screaming for three seconds on Gusters, but she's able to spin and score and has 10 points. Yeah, she was camped in the middle of that lane, but on the catch, you see that good touch and great hands from Hannah Gusters. Riley Glenn now with 21. Second career 20-point game. One of six behind the arc is Gregory. Noble all the way to the basket with the left hand. She's been quiet in different ways here in this third quarter, but that penetration is key. She can get to the rim. Walker, double team. Back to Sanchez. Unable to hit the layup. Oklahoma State with a the ball. They'll have the lead going to the fourth. Will it be by two or more? A steal by Briley Glenn. A runner. Couldn't get it. Ultimately, that's what Oklahoma State had to do. They put themselves back in this game. They were down eight at half. It's tied, and they've given themselves a lead now of 53-51. Lob run to Moppin. She couldn't finish, but King State gets the loose ball. Bird guarding Sundell here. Multiple missed opportunities in that third quarter for Kansas State. Open looks, buckets that they couldn't get to go. And as we said it earlier, Serena Sundell has not scored since that first quarter. But give credit to Quincy Noble. She has had that defensive assignment. Timeout Time called by Oklahoma State. And they finished the day by watching the Cats in action right here in Bramlage Coliseum. Let's see. That was also split into the indoor football facility, the Shamrock Indoor Football Facility as well. Thank you, Hannah. Always a fantastic event on many of them here on site at the basketball game as well. Turnover by Oklahoma State out of the timeout. Looks like Gusters is going to come back in for Oklahoma State. Sundell drawing a crowd and turns it over. A great defensive stop that time by Oklahoma State. Reading that all the way through, it was telegraphed. We get another play on the other end. That's where K-State's got to continue to get stops on this end. they got to convert on the other. Sundell with the block. Kind of a crazy sequence. Oklahoma State nearly stole it back. Here's Sundell, one-on-one. -on -one. And one! Ties the game. And Sundell to the line trying to get to double figures. And she does by hitting the free throw. Ten now for Serena Sundell. She joins Briley Glenn and Gregory as those in double figures. And the crowd comes to life here in the fourth quarter. Double. King State offensively just struggling right now to get things rolling. Walker will take a three. Rebound, Lester will let it go out of bounds, and it'll be Oklahoma State ball. But the activity on the ball, that has been what has made Kansas State uncomfortable here this afternoon. Trying to get it to Gusters. Swing over to Garzone, and she rims in the three. They've made the pay. Lester goes right into Guster, throws up the shot, and it'll miss badly. I like that no call, though, by the official. There was a lot of contact initiated by both. Her goes all the way to the other end and draws the foul from Walker. And that is freshman on red shirt freshman. She's the only one for the Cowgirls. Much smaller look right now for Kansas State. Gregory posting up. Pushing her way inside. Missed the shot. Edgar Rivera gets the rebound. They got what they wanted. The isolation for Gregory. Couldn't get it to go and didn't get the whistle. Ossie. Kick out for Garzone. She'll drive to the basket and lay it in. What poise and confidence right now from this Oklahoma State squad. It's been an up and down seesaw all season for J.C. Hoyt and this squad. But right now they are answering the bell. Sundell through the lane. Able to lay it in. And if you're going to be challenged, I need somebody to step up and make a play. Put the ball in the hands of Serena Sundell. Let her create. 
for herself and for her teammates. Kansas State has not allowed a team to shoot 50% all season. This defense has been locked down, even without Lee. But today, the Cowgirls are hitting 51% of their shots and 52% from behind the arc. Noble talking a little trash after draining another one in the lane. Offense clicking for the Cowgirls. They have found a way to attack this Kansas State defense, and when they've gotten in the paint, they've been able to finish. Briley Glenn driving on the kick from Gregory scores. 23. Certainly looked like Gusters knocked it out, and if it wasn't that, it would have been a, for sure a foul on K-State, but neither call. Other end, Walker bumped to the ground, just slammed into. Walker herself, we said it earlier, she's shooting just about 79% in Big 12 play from the charity strike. She has tied a career high with seven boards, Walker has, in this game. One of the better freshmen, even though she's a redshirt freshman. I, In my mind, I see her as a first-year player. Because yep. she didn't get a lot of time last year and then took a medical redshirt. So she's here now and being a contributor for this Kansas State squad. A big part of their future. Walker with a steal out high. A chance to tie or get within one. Jalen Glenn to the basket. No! Good defense by Ossie. And how many times have we seen it today where this Kansas State team has had point blank layups, even in traffic, that they have not been able to finish? Heard. Flashes to the basket and missed the layup. Walker to tie it. No. Sundell's chance to tie. No. Again, Oklahoma State daring K-State to shoot those shots, and the Wildcats obliging their 5 of 24 from behind the arc. It happened in the loss at Oklahoma State, or at Oklahoma as well. They've gotten out and put a hand in the face of the shooter. There have not been a lot of open threes for the Cats, and either way, even the ones that have been, they haven't been able to knock them down. Lob stolen by Sundell. She'll go all the way in. This is where now this team's got to buckle in and dial in to what you have to do in your execution. Noble, free throw line, jumper. Got it again. And that was straight up, drawn up, coming out of that timeout. They needed to get a bucket. Who do they go to? One of the most prolific scorers on their squad and had a great career at North Texas at Quincy Noble. Gregory working inside on Gusters, couldn't get it. 3.20 to go in the ball game. Oklahoma State by three. Nova with 19 points. Heard with 20 or 19 points. We said this would be a backcourt battle here this afternoon, Brian, and it absolutely has come to roost. With these Oklahoma State players trying to figure out a way just to gut it out on the road. Shot clock at five. Gusters fouled on the shot by Gregory. But Gusters is headed to the line here for two. Trying to extend this into a multiple possession game for the Cowgirls. A rare miss for Gusters, who's an 88% free throw shooter. But can take contact and then get herself a chance to get to the line. J.C. Hoyt trying to use what little bench they have to give Gusters a breather and then be able to get her back in probably for the last two minutes or so of this game. Under three minutes to play. A lead of four for Oklahoma State. Walker able to hit a free throw line jumper. That's clutch. They have dissected this K-State defense. A near steal. Garzon does get it stolen. Two minutes to go. K-State down two with the ball. And this is where patience now has to come in for Kansas State. Or take a wide open. Three, the first points of the game for Jalen Glenn. They dared them to shoot the three. They've given them open looks. And Jalen Glenn finally steps up to hit one of the open, open ones the Cats have had. Heard trying to answer. Double team. Ossie. Great fake and a foul called as she drove in for the shot. It'll be on Briley Glenn. Oklahoma State saying it was on the shot. But the officials are saying that it was a reach-in foul before the shot for Ossie. Fourth foul on K-State. One more. Oklahoma State is shooting free throws. Here's Ossie. Stops in the lane. Hangs off the Gusters and she'll lay it in. Cowgirls go back in front by one. A minute 20 to go in the ball game. 
Riley Glenn. Way off the mark and a rebound to Oklahoma State. Nearly stolen by Serena, but it'll stay with the Cowgirls. Hurd wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Walker guarding her. Freshman versus freshman. Ten on the shot clock. Hurd driving, stripped of the ball by Walker. Looked like it went out of bounds off of Zy Walker. Come take a look, get it done quick. There was no need to exacerbate it. Inbound play for the Cowgirls. Ossie to the free throw line. Guarded jumper, short, rebound, Walker. A career high for her in rebounds. And now K-State will use a timeout with 43 seconds left. And it's been a struggle for the Wildcats on the offensive end. Oklahoma State has dared them to shoot the entire day. And so tough to do on the road. And that's what this Cowgirl squad has been able to do. When they needed to step up, they came out hot to start the second half and have been able to keep their foot on the gas and just give themselves a chance. You want to put yourself in a position to get yourself one on the road. Here is Sundell working against Gusters. Pinned underneath the basket. Nearly threw it away. Back to Serena on the baseline, working on Gusters. Sundell will drive, lean in, shoot, and slip. 26 seconds left. Timeout for Oklahoma State to advance the ball. And that will be the last one for Oklahoma State. As we said, each team with one timeout left. Baseline, Sundell goes. We've seen her all season go hard right. That time it was hard left. And against Gusters, just trying to create space and see if she can't get enough separation to finish. And that's exactly what she does. And Serena Sundell with a huge bucket. It was a very quiet middle of this game, but down the stretch when they have needed her the most, Serena Sundell has delivered late in this fourth quarter. You weather the storm. You figure out a way to get it done. They couldn't do it at Oklahoma. They couldn't do it at Texas. You got to come back here to the friendly confines of Bramlage Coliseum and figure out a way to win. Do they have enough? Can they get a stop here and shut Oklahoma State down? It's been a lot of herd or noble down the stretch for Oklahoma State. It looks like they will hold for the win or nothing at all. Hurd trying to go one-on-one -on -one out high. Guster's going to set a high screen. Guster's with it now. Looking for Noble. Guster's not up the shot. Two with one. Guster's will shoot it at the buzzer. And they'll go. And Kansas State will make.